Your grandma will use phrases you still don't have a clue what they mean. I think one of my favorites is like, oh honey. And oh honey can mean like a thousand things when she says it. So it's either one, you just cross grandma, or two, like she's actually being endearing, but usually you just cross grandma. The biggest one is the way people refer to the police. Like back at home we say ops or like the, the boys. Here they just say the police or the cops. <laughs> really simple like blurbs that we just make nifty. Like when I first came to the United States, I wouldn't be able to tell like how can something smell funny, you know, what does it mean? And it, it just means it smells odd. Language variation is part of people's cultural identity. It's part of their heritage. So when you look at someone's dialect, you're looking at someone's home language, someone's um, cultural heritage. And to, to speak badly of it is to really criticize someone's home. So here's a question. Why do you not get nasalization here, but you do get nasalization? People from Appalachia wrongly get labeled with all kinds of negative traits because they have language variation dialects that are different from either what people expect or different from other regions of the U.S. People feel like my accent like, like means that I'm dumb, so they'll hear me speak and they'll automatically like just assume that I'm not very bright. Personally, I feel like I need to go where there's more diversity of voices because I need to be the person who has like the southern twang. People have the idea that that is a very certain type of person and I go against almost all of those notions. Here at West Virginia University we're very fortunate to have students from all 55 counties in West Virginia. We have students from all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and we have students who come from 107 different countries. And when you hear all of these different accents and languages and expressions of culture, what you really hear is like a symphony. And when everyone is speaking together, that symphony is quite beautiful. The first impression was, was that English what we learned in our home country? You agree, I also love broccoli, right? Cool. Mew. I can't stand broccoli. I get to interact with students from all over the world, and they bring so many interesting perspectives to the classroom. That sounds great. What are you doing? I don't think uh, accent important to to talk with each other because I think everybody try to underst try to understand each other and we have the body language. When I shooting and I feel I am the one of the team. In this age of globalization, um, what you do see is that a lot of people um, travel from one place to the other, they come in contact with different groups of people, and especially for um, campuses that tend to be diverse, um, you get to get a feel of maybe the, the wider world. All these people speak their versions of English, but we're still communicating. Every time you start speaking to them, you can ask them about their culture, about their food, like music they listen, and that's how you start a conversation, and maybe even a friendship. You know, I am, I'm from West Virginia, and I think that that is important, but I think that I have taken so many qualities from so many other students and, and colleagues from around the world that it's really um, changed, changed me in a profound way. I'm Peyton Wyatt, and I'm a Mountaineer. 
I am Sasha Tarabanova, and I'm a mountaineer. I'm Kirk Hazen, and I'm a mountaineer. I'm Joyce McConnell, and I'm a mountaineer. And I'm a mountaineer. I'm, I'm a mountaineer. And I'm a mountaineer. I'm um, mountaineer. <laughs> I'm a mountaineer. And I'm a mountaineer. And I am a mountaineer.